Hi everyone, welcome to Got Your Back Chat, a podcast run by the editorial board of the campaign Got Your Back, run by young people for young people. If you want to get involved in the conversation, follow us over on Instagram at GYB Hull. So the topic of this month is relationships and today we are discussing sex education. My name's Jess and I'm joined with Scarlett, Josh M and Lucy T. So how is everyone? I'm great. Good. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good to hear. I'm all right, thank you, yeah. So, bit of a, I guess, um, an awkward and not discussed enough topic, in my opinion, is sex education. So I think we should start with how is the sex education actually taught in your schools? Like, how do you find it? I'll wait till last because mine's interesting. Well, I thought, like, obviously, I'm I'm on a gap here right now. But when I was uh, when I was at school, um, I feel like in sixth form they didn't do they didn't touch on it because we'd all sort of had the talk. But I remember specifically in um, and Jess will relate to this because Jess was Jess went to the same school as me. Yeah. But <laughs> we um, in secondary school we did have a day that was dedicated to sex education, and um, and I the school nurse came in and she talked to us about like how it was works and what and everything that goes on behind the scenes and um and you know and all the different types of contraception that were available um and to be honest I took I think we took quite a lot from it um and they you know she went through like a powerpoint about everything and how it you know like different different methods of contraception and and the way that you know that like STDs and things like that. Um, but I think the one thing that I remember from sex ed is probably putting um, a condom on a, on a, like a banana oh or gosh, a, fake, the a fake penis. And that's penis. like the one the thing. The purple plastic penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whose penis is purple? Um, but yeah, that, that was, that was, that was sex education in, uh, in, in, in our secondary school. I don't know if it's different depending on, like which secondary school you went to um anybody got anything different mine well I'm only in year 10 so my like main sex education it was only last year um and I know we did um it was basically it was spread between about five weeks and we did it in PSHE so we had one lesson a week um so we had about five lessons on it um, and we, an organisation came in, so I can't remember the name of the organisation, but we had like an outside um, sort of, you know, like where they provide like free condoms and all stuff like that. So they kind of came in and did it for us, which I think was a lot better than if our teachers had done it, because I feel like that would have just, no one would have taken it seriously. Yeah, less awkward. Um, definitely less awkward yeah definitely yeah definitely um but it was pretty good um I know they um a lot of it was um changed so the year before mine because I have friends in the year above they did the same thing as you you know putting um condoms on things and stuff like that but we completely we didn't have any of that so my year they kind of completely cut down and we had a few less lessons and it was literally just the basics like different types of contraception kind of kind of what it all is it was very basic um and that was only my year so my school all the time before that it was in more detail but yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty good I'd say it was pretty good for what it was but it it didn't really yeah it wasn't it could have been better that's for sure yeah so Josh you said yours was interesting so so I I went to well um I'm still at um uh, it's well, it's a religious school, but I'm not religious. Um, so basically, it was pretty much non-existent because they don't agree with it until you're married. Um, so they think, oh, we won't teach you. Oh, okay. Because you've got your whole life to, to experiment for yourself. So pretty much no, no education on it, except from like your science lessons, maybe RE, where they say what's allowed and what's not. Uh that's pretty much it. We had one, uh, I don't know if any other schools have like a lesson, uh, we call it PSHCE. It's like a lesson where mm. you do like life skills. Um, we maybe watched a video in year seven, but that's pretty much it, nothing, nothing else. And I was, a, I was a form rep, so I was in a meeting where they discussed it um, and they, uh, the heads of year said, that they don't do it and I was like what yeah that that's I was so crazy. confused and they were like yeah we don't agree with it because it's a religious school but now mm-hmm. it's not as religious as it used to be it's five almost years quite tradition the traditional kind of so Christian... I don't know what it's like now uh, yeah 
that's that's yeah. weird. I mean, obviously, as Lucy said, we went to the same school. Um, we didn't have PSHE. We had like specific days every half term where we would learn about something. So it was something that we learned about for like one full day. Um, and like Lucy said, it was, you know, the condoms on the penis, here's contraception. Um, my main issue with it was, for me anyway, when we learned about it in like year eight or nine, I had no interest in it whatsoever. And I was very much in the mindset, I was kind of not mature enough to like respect and understand what they were saying. So I was kind of just, I'm just going to avoid yeah. listening and I don't care. I'm never going to have sex. I'm never going to be a sexual person. <laughs> I, well, okay, you can laugh at me now, but 13, Sorry. 14 year old me did not want that. <laughs> 13, 14 year old me was happy to just, I was like, I don't like boys. Boys are disgusting. <laughs> don't speak to me about them. <laughs> Which obviously is very like far from where I am now, but I feel that a lot of people <laughs> 13, 14 are not really developed enough in themselves and comfortable enough in themselves yeah. to actually yeah. take I agree. that in. I think, I think the yeah. thing that I find... I agree with that. Yeah, I think I think the thing that I find the the probably the weirdest is the fact that they teach you they teach you obviously how it happens um heterosexually. Um I think that's the right word. But um in terms of like cuz obviously you've got different types of sexualities and different types of genders. I don't yeah. think there was enough. I mean obviously at the age that they were were taught it so I was I think we were taught it when we were probably like either 13, 14, which I, again, I think is yeah. quite young um, to be taught about it. I mean, obviously at some point you have to be, but I mean, with the legal age of consent being 16, I don't think, I don't think there's a need to be taught it any younger than that. Um, but at the, at the same time, I think the thing that I find the most um, scary and the most sort of, um, sort of wrong in today's age is the fact that we weren't taught about like lesbian sex or gay sex and that is that's a big I mean obviously different there's different types of maturity levels um at that point some people would take it really well and some people wouldn't um but I think I think more should be sort of done about that I mean obviously you're discovering who you are as a person and you might not have discovered you know more about your sex you, you know you might not know that you're gay or you might not know that you're lesbian or bi or whatever um at that age um but I think there should definitely be more coverage in schools about that um rather than just being like yeah this is just this is the way that it happens and it doesn't happen any other any other way and that's sort of what i was aware of at the time because i was taught it so yeah, it's young very, it was very closed-minded and i think i mean lucy and i are a couple of years older than both josh and scarlett and i remember even lgbtq in itself wasn't discussed in schools until we were in year 10 or 11 we never got any kind of education on that never mind the sexual side of that and it was it was sex education was very very close minded you know it was very boys are doing this girls are doing this you're learning about this this and this this is the girls contraception and that was kind of it and it was very you know this is how we've this is why we teach it but this is because we have to teach it we're not doing it because we want to we're not doing it because we think it's this thing that everyone needs to explore. It's because it's part of the curriculum that we have to teach it in schools. That's how I felt when we kind of learned about it. Yeah. Kind of forced as well. Um, mm. wh when I did it after our first lesson, it was kind of strange. We had like cards that we had to fill in. So we kind of just had to put our name, our age. But then like one of the questions, we had to put our sexualities on this card. Um, and they were kept like anonymous. They were only given to the person who was teaching us the sex ed. But then we were like, oh, well, if we're putting our sexualities on, maybe, you know, they're going to see like they're going to teach us about different sexualities they kind of want. But they didn't. It was like, tell us your sexuality it's not going to change anything. We're still still only going to teach you about straight things. But, you know, at least we know. <laughs> okay. like, it was really strange. We were like, well, why Why do you want to know? Like, because, uh, yeah, it was just all completely um, heterosexual. And it was like, well, that's not why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there's been massive changes in the last sort of five years towards LGBTQ in general in that sense because it wasn't even mentioned when we no. did it like at all neither but then <laughs> my school <laughs> yeah yeah i suppose in a religious in a religious sense i know a lot of religions are very 
um, they have different sort of views on on sexuality and and being part of the LGBTQ plus community is sometimes a little bit um, bit of a taboo subject, if you like, in religion. Um, I know definitely in Christianity it can be quite a yeah. problem in Catholicism. Um, so I, I suppose people had to be like like whoever taught sex ed had to be careful you know not to offend people but like it happens like it's a it's a fact of life this is the thing that you know could be frustrating um yeah i think it depends on the teacher who's teaching it as well because i was literally about to have, say that yeah. like a, yeah it's like a really nice teacher who just gets on with everyone makes it so much easier to talk about or you could just get like a boring teacher <laughs> i was gonna say the subject but I'll, I'll leave that out of it. Um, you just get a boring teacher who just makes it awkward. And... I mean, yeah, no one wants to be taught about sex by, like, a 60-year-old man, realistically. No, nobody wants that. I think people forget that sort of 30, 40 years ago, or even less so, like, sex education was not really discussed, like, at all. And it was a very, very taboo subject. I mean, even now, it's not really something you would discuss much, like, outside of school, I don't think. But the, so the teachers teaching it are probably as uncomfortable as the students who are learning it. So a yeah, lot of the teachers, not they're, not, they're not open about it. I mean, I was very lucky when we did the main bulk of ours. The teacher I had was very supportive and answered all of the questions honestly, other than ones that were, you know, just rude, because you do get people who are immature with it. But Of course. I, yeah, I was quite lucky. But, I mean, imagine if you had a, t- a teacher who was quite awkward about that and didn't feel comfortable themselves, then the students also missing out on getting the education that they need. No, I completely agree. And I think I yeah. think the thing that um, when... Because, like, Jess was saying earlier about being too young to learn about... Some people aren't mature enough to learn about, you know, sex and sex education and contraception and all that. Um, I think with with a lot of the slideshows and things like that um, that we were taught um, especially in sort of like main sort of assemblies on it I feel like nurses tried to scare us away from it and being like sort of you will get pregnant and you will die kind of thing <laughs> mean and girls the mean girls it's, quote <laughs> it's that that kind of, yeah no basic no Literally, exactly you will like mean girls I feel and like because they started that, that was- sex ed yeah and you will die <laughs> <laughs> so so there's truth in the mean girls quote um uh, because i feel like they put it in a very like you shouldn't be doing this you know this isn't a thing um especially i mean in religious schools like like what josh said they just kind of they, it doesn't exist basically until you're married um and i think yeah i think i think there should be i think they kind of scared us into thinking that it was wrong and it was like yeah you sh- you shouldn't you know you should be scared of all the consequences that could happen so i remember the nurse showing us a load of slides about different stds and just they were like we were horrific pictures oh. and i just remember thinking oh my god yeah, i don't want to have, have sex that. i never want to have sex if, if this I happens don't want kids anymore, that's it. Yeah. and that's not the case all the time literally <laughs> yeah and exactly the yeah. other thing with that like the whole thing it was it wasn't like okay this is something natural that will happen you know you will as you get older this is something that you will want to do it was very much should you put yourself in the unfortunate position that you are having sex with someone this is what you should do not this is completely normal (laughs) it was very much it was like oh if you're unfortunate enough to have sex this is what you should do (laughs) not okay you know this is normal you will feel this way at some point. And that goes back to the age thing. Like, in my opinion, we should have had... I, I agree with having sex education when you're 13, 14, because some people will want to do it young. And it's best that they're doing it safely if they're going to do it young. Not suggesting underage sex, but if you're going to, you might as well be doing it safely. It you happens. might as well know what you're doing. Exactly, it happens. But yeah. I, I also think that when you're 16, 17, there's other things that you yeah. will want to know. And I think more people will be open and willing to learn about it when they're at an age where they are thinking those things naturally instead of being told that this is what they might they might think in the future maybe it'd be useful to have like a an extended version of it like in year 11 i agree before you go into college and before yeah i agree you're legally allowed no i agree i think more should be 
because at that time maybe you might be experimenting do you know what I mean like if you've started having sex and you know you could be in a long-term relationship Mm -hmm. maybe like you maybe might have been with someone for quite a while and um I think they just sort of Tell, told us the bare basics of penis goes in vagina. Yeah, and there you go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but, upon your uncle, and it, and it what? It's not like that. Mom, take a pill, um, and you'll be fine. In reality, was essentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, moving like I think I think um, moving on as well with you know when we when you get to a sort of mature age, I feel like a lot should. I feel like in schools we were never sort of taught about sort of sexual abuse, uh, which can sometimes, which is a is a big thing, and it, especially in the media at the moment, it's a really big thing, um, and uh, like the dangers of 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 sending uh, of things like nudes. I mean, I've personally I've had. Um, I've had problems with that. Um, I know quite a lot of my friends have yeah, had a definitely. few issues regarding that, but I think I, I, don't, I think that was kind of like shunned and that was a thing, oh, we're not going to tell them. Yeah, I agree. It was kind of, sex education was the education of how to have sex. It wasn't everything around that. It was just that in itself. With today's like social media and with the fact that we all have access to things like Snapchat and we can send photos, I think, I think there's more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think more in school should be taught about how to avoid that and how, you know, that this does happen. Um, Because it's a pretty big thing, really. Yeah, 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 definitely. (laughs) Sex education was very much the education of how to have sex and what sex does. You know, sex creates children or sex creates STDs. That was essentially what it was. And it wasn't everything surrounding that. Like, things like news, like, we were kind of just told, don't send them, (laughs) it's done. (laughs) Yeah. And then... They didn't talk about kind of, okay, if you do it, you know, this is how you should handle it. Or if if someone's pressuring you to do it, this is how you could handle it. It was very much, don't do it, that's the end of the discussion. But they forget that people, when they're young, they are going to make mistakes surrounding those things. People are going to do things that they technically Mm -hmm. shouldn't do. And I feel like the whole sex education they didn't discuss what would happen if you happened to do these things that you shouldn't do it was very much just don't do them yeah don't do them you'll die (laughs) basically which is which is the wrong way it's the wrong attitude um towards something that literally you know is is a part of life it will happen um and you know people it's it is a part of life um i think as well the sort of we were never taught um about things like masturbation and especially porn porn was very much a taboo no you don't watch yeah. that that's illegal um has anyone got I anything mean, about that I, um, any stories i don't have any stories because i'm yeah. still one of those people i think because of potentially because of sex education i personally don't watch it um and i never i never have watched it um nothing against people who do But it was very much something where it was like, oh, it's illegal. I shouldn't do it. Like, Lucy will tell you, I was the, like, biggest, like, teacher's pet suck up goody two-shoes going through secondary school. I was going to follow whatever the teachers were telling me to do. If they were telling me not to have sex, I wasn't going to have sex. Like, you kidding me? I was doing nothing. So (laughs) so when they were like, don't watch porn, I was like, oh, I must not watch porn. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to look at that. I was not, I wasn't even really curious about it, to be honest, until kind of more recently. But it was, it was like masturbation wasn't even mentioned. And porn, it was a very, a, another one of those don't do it kind of things. No. It was no. crazy. Neither. And I think it's something that, I, I'm not sure how they should teach it, but I definitely think it's something that should be brought into the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I think, I think it should be taught, but I think again, I think it should be taught at a bit of an older age because obviously it is, you know, the, the, to get hold of porn it's got to be you know it is illegal um but i don't think i don't think it should be as, as sort of shamed as it is because yeah. it is a, again it's you know it, it happens and people make money from it and things like that um, i mean look at only fans like that is a big thing that's that's just kind of come into our sort of world um in the in the past few years and it's it's been made quite a quite a big thing and you know sex work is a thing but i i think i think schools should maybe cover the fact that 
um, I think definitely masturbation, but I think at a, at a later age, like we said, maybe like do like a, a sex ed in year 11 instead when people are becoming more sexually active and becoming more sort of aware of their sexuality um, and they're a bit more mature to deal with that conversation. Because I think at 14, you're just not mature enough at all. Um, like I think, it's, I think it's important that it's in like year 11 because you go into college the next years and you... You don't have to go to college, I don't think. You can do an apprenticeship or other things. So you, that's like the last level of education for some people. Yeah. So I think it's important to do it there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. And you kind of left your, to your own device. Yeah. You will learn by making mistakes. Yeah. Like you will not learn like to not... It might take you to send a nude and something to happen for you to learn from it. I'm not saying that everyone should do that. But sometimes people learn by doing it and making the mistake. And then realising, okay, that was wrong, I'm not going to do I it. I suppose you learn from other people as well, from what they do, and they you hear it and then you're like, oh, I better not do that. Yeah, yeah. and we, mm. I think it needs to be gone over how to deal with that because, like, I know some people, they'll send a nude and then, and it's, um, and then something will go wrong with it and it'll end up you know becoming a bigger thing than it should have been and then they'll just panic and they'll panic and they'll panic and they were like no like no one really knows what to do in that situation and it's like we've been told not to do it but some people will do it and then it will go wrong and then we need to know how to deal with that because otherwise you know people will just like just panic and then it will just go get you know get worse and they need to know how to sort of deal with making the mistakes that they're inevitably gonna make do you think it's because we're told not to do it that it gets blown out of proportion and worse than it actually is? Probably. Yeah, because I think you have the polar opposites. I mean, you have some people that will be told not to do something and they're like, huh, well, it's my teacher telling me I'm not, I'm not going to listen, I'm going to do it. And then you get the people... Yeah. Um, which was similar to me at the time, where it was, okay, I've been told not to do this, so I'm not going to do it. And if someone does it, that means they're a bad person. Yeah. And that's completely not the right attitude to have on either spectrum. But there's a level, I think. Yeah, you've got to sort of go have the middle yeah. ground. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, um, you're very much labelled at that age. So if someone does send a nude and it gets out and, you know, stuff happens and it all goes wrong for that person... Yeah. They're not necessarily... I mean, I know that like, the word slut was used quite a lot yeah. when I was in secondary school and it's become a little bit more of a taboo word now. A lot of people are very careful about slut shaming. Um, but I think I think when I was in secondary school and that sort of thing was going around and someone, you know, a girl might be um, sleeping with a few other people, a boy might be sleeping with, with you know, different people. And there was definitely a lot of labelling and a lot of um, bad sort of stigma around that and you know again uh, as you get older you discover that it is more common and it's not you know just because you do it at that age doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong it just means that um, and we shouldn't necessarily label people for it it's just that person likes to have say likes to you know explore their sexuality a bit more and likes to have a bit more sex um than, than you know than other people um but but i think i think that's the thing that they they the labeling is is a big thing in secondary um and people automatically think because you're doing that oh it's bad and you're you know you're you're a nasty person you're a bad person you're promoting all this this kind of of thing but as you learn as you get older you realize that actually it's a lot more uh, things like these are a lot more common than you think and it's not as you know it's not as taboo in the real world um yeah definitely. and i think that's a big part of it and i think i think lucy will remember i remember being in secondary school and if anyone was found to have lost their virginity or done this with this person or this with this person. It was a massive deal. It was... Everyone yeah. found Everyone about knew it. about yeah. it. Every group... Yeah. And it was... I mean, no one... Re- when I, I mean, I lost mine at 16. You know, I was... I wasn't young. I, I was, it was just... I'd been with someone for a year and the time was right and I did it. Um, and no one knew because by that point we were in college and it was far less of a big deal. But if I'd lost mine in secondary school and it had got out, I mean, it was just this massive thing and people were talking about it. People who didn't even know you would be talking about it. And to me, that's just that's just not fair. And I think if we'd have been educated differently, that wouldn't be the mm-hmm. case because people mm. would be like, you know, it's their body, it's their business, which I think is the message that's being sent out a lot more now 
than even five years mm. ago. Yeah, so it's all very recent as well. Mm. It's acceptance. Yeah, mm. yeah definitely. I think when I was younger, I remember particularly um, one of my, I think we were both 14. I was, four, yeah, I was 14, she was 14. And my best friend, I won't obviously name her, um, at the time had lost her virginity to the boy that she was seeing for quite a long time. And at 14, like, obviously it's not the legal age, but he, I think he was 16 um, when it happened. And she, I remember her coming to me the next morning and crying and being like, I'm pregnant, I must be pregnant. And I said, you're not like, did you use protection? And she was like, yeah, we used a condom. But I think it was just the whole sort of like, oh my God, I've done it and I've done something I shouldn't have really done. That yeah, put her and you think the worst. in a position that made her feel really uncomfortable when actually we hadn't been talk, talked to properly about it. Um, about the fact that, like, you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I think, I think, I, I don't understand. Like, it, it just became a bigger thing, didn't it? Like, like Jess said, it was a much bigger thing than actually, it, you know, actually it is, it is in real life. Yeah. When and you're I think in people, year nine. I think people learn more about sex education from the internet and from experience than they did from sex ed. Like, for mm. me, I took, hardly anything from sex ed I, I know what we learned about but I didn't remember it I mean I actually have a funny story which I'll come to in a second but um <laughs> I, I personally didn't take anything in and so when I got to a point where I wanted to explore that it was kind of me and my boyfriend at the time um being like okay we need to figure out what we're doing now like how does this work and how does this work and we kind of figured it out on our own but I have a funny story where, like, I didn't take much in of sex ed. And we learned about, obviously, contraception in GCSE biology, which Josh and Scarlett, I think, you're, I mean, you'll probably have already done, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I remember, in, I remember it was kind of, it was early year 12, and I still had my GCSE books, going through my, like, notes from biology to look at, like, methods of contraception. <laughs> Because I didn't remember anything from sex ed. And I was like, I don't want to Google it. So I'm just going to look in my biology book. <laughs> like, that was me. <laughs> so, but if we learned about it in year 11, maybe I would have taken it more in. And I would have actually, like, yeah. understood it. Possibly. Wow. Scarlett, do you have anything to add with that as well? Like, with how you sort of... Because obviously you're now, you're now doing your GCSEs. Mm-hmm. Like, how is it taught in biology now? Is it a little bit more um... open? Um... I don't think so. It's it's still very, very, very scientific. It's very, you know, this is the contraception. This is what it's doing. This is the advantages. This is the disadvantages. Um, This is the success rate. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, this is the percentage it works. Yeah. um, Yeah, no, it's still, it's not much more open. But I think it also depends on the teacher because my teacher, she's great, um, my biology teacher. And I think she's probably a bit more open than some teachers are but still not even it is still like the science and that's about it it's yeah it's not it's not very open at all josh i'm guessing it's no better for you in terms of openness around it no (laughs) if i was taught about it it was in science and it was all the technical things about it i do remember that i was just thinking to myself uh, when when i was in the lesson where we're doing about the the organs and the the reproductive system um Every every single lesson, and without fail, when when an image came on the board, there was a person that just fainted. <laughs> they just collapsed every really? single lesson. <laughs> oh gosh! So that made it even more awkward. What, like for actually everyone. passed out in the middle of the class. Yeah. Oh, I remember people oh passing out when we had to like carve out a frog's heart, but never never from seeing like a dick on the screen. Oh, yeah, they, they made me feel sick. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, that's that's something yeah. I haven't heard before. Yeah, that's my cool story. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Again, I, I think know. that comes with the territory though, because like I said, we were kind of scared into the fact that it was like, oh yeah, sex is bad, don't do it, you know? Like, and people are automatically like, oh yeah. my god, like this is such a massive thing, and then you know that happens. I, I I have heard that before actually from someone else. It's not uncommon for people to just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> get overwhelmed by it um <laughs> which is which is it's weird um, we were very lucky weren't we lucy like our science teacher through gcse's was amazing and he was very chilled and he wasn't the kind of person who was awkward about it he would he would no. say whatever and like so we would have to draw out like you know when you have to draw out the 
the penis and the vagina and you have to label the parts and stuff. He didn't make that awkward, but I can imagine for some people, like drawing that in a book would be an extremely uncomfortable experience. Yeah, so I think it really depends definitely. on like who's teaching it. Like, Especially it really if you're like sat next to people you don't really talk to. Yeah. Oh, God. Just awkward. Yeah. The boy girl mm. seating plan would not have helped in that case. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. It's. Um, I was sat next to this boy when we were doing periods, and periods aren't even like that's not sexual. That's just like it's just a thing that happens. But mm-hmm. he just. It wasn't even like he was like. Oh, he just wouldn't take it seriously, and mm. it was. I was just like, oh, 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 yeah. It's just. Uh, I think a lot of, I mean, people like to say, you know, girls mature faster than boys, and I'm not saying that's always true. Um, I, I would say that. It is, it is, oh, yeah, I think a lot of, I, okay, maybe I would say that's true, but I don't want to. I'm not um, going to offend Josh. Think, <laughs> well, yeah, I'll try not to be offended. <laughs> it is a lot of, the, I think a lot of the, um, like, in lesson taboo, so not so much around, like, s- sort of, um, spreading nudes because i know a lot of girls can be awful about slut shaming um it is a lot of when you're doing mm. sex ed in class it is a lot of time the boys who were shouting who were being like oh mm. and it's yeah and especially when you're sat next to a boy and it's always the same yeah, type yeah, of people yeah i'm not well. saying i'm not yeah. saying all mm. oh, boys obviously but it is one specific group of people and you know where they sit everyone has that one specific group of boys in their in their school yeah. <laughs> and you just know who they are and you know that when the like title comes up and it's oh we're doing the reproductive system you just know it's gonna be awful <laughs> uh-huh. yeah and you th- and also i think i think that comes with like one immaturity but also like it shows that they're not like they are maybe insecure or they feel awkward themselves and so they project yeah, maybe. volume up to try and awkwardness. drown out the fact that they feel awkward about it. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I like going back and mm. I think we keep going back to this, the age at which you're taught it makes a massive difference because those boys when they're 13, 14 are shouting and across the classroom making noises. I mean, I'm not going to make the noise. I'm not going to embarrass myself, but you all know which noise it is. <laughs> yep. It's that way, yep. like, oh, mm. horrible. Um, but then when they're 16, they might be a little bit more quiet about it. They might actually, like, listen and they might take it in. Yeah. I mean, there's hope. There's hope that when they're 16, they might take it in. Might is the yeah. key word in there. I mean, I remember we did anonymous questions um, with our form tutor at the end of the sex ed day. So you kind of could write a question down and they'd like read it out and answer it in front of the class. And I just remember some of them were actually quite good questions and some of them were just stupid. I mean, you mm-hmm, could tell some yeah. people were just taking the mick and, you know, didn't care. Whereas some people actually genuinely wanted mm. to know. Mm-hmm. I think as well, um, at the end of like like days where we had that and we'd had the talk and everything, I don't feel like because like here we're, we're discussing it, you know, as a lot as a group. I feel like after they kind of finished the day, it was like, right, guys, you know, go home and you know, don't talk about it. Whereas, I think there should be more sort of in discussion in class in groups about it, um, I agree. just to kind of get more familiar with it and get more comfortable with talking to people about it. Because I know when I was younger, I wasn't very open about sex. I wasn't very open at all about periods and things like that. I was, I, I found it something really awkward to talk to with my friends about. I didn't really want to talk to them about it. Um, and still now, sometimes I'm a little bit sort of, you know, my friends will say things and I kind of, I talk about it, but I don't talk about it as open. I think just because of the way I've been brought up. But um, but yeah, I think I think during that day there should have been some sort of discussion as a group um, where you should discuss with with other genders um, about sex and you know what yeah. they sort of think rather than just yeah. being like oh you know this is it and you know you know go home <laughs> and don't talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a que- I have a question for everyone, kind of beyond the school classroom it's still about sex education is how are people's families about it because my mum is a very kind of conservative person doesn't discuss it and so I remember having sex education and I didn't really speak to her about it I was just like oh we did this and it was you know that was it um and I remember like when (laughs) it came to me actually experiencing it for myself she did not know she I mean she found out from my sister about like that for me in lockdown (laughs) so 
So two years down the line, because I, it was something that we just did not discuss in our household ever. My sister's a lot more open about it than I was at her age. You know, she'll bring things up if she wants to bring things up. You know, she'll talk about that kind of thing. And me at that age, I did not at all. But my mum is very much, it's not something you discuss. It's your own business. Don't do it till you're 21. Don't do it in the house. That kind of thing. So I just want to know what everyone else's experiences with that was with families. Mine's pretty similar. It's not really talked about. Uh, it's kind of just, I don't know, really. Keep yourself to yourself. <laughs> it's not something everyone wants to hear about. Yeah, mine's pretty similar to that. I wouldn't say we're super uh, conservative or anything, but it is pretty much like you don't really talk about it. But it is quite funny. Um, when I first learned about like sort of periods and sex and everything to do with that, um, uh, me and my friends kind of all learned at the same time. So we were quite young. This was like year seven-ish. They were all like, oh yeah, my parents gave me the talk. Oh my God, it was so embarrassing. And I was <laughs> like, I never, I never got that. I got given a book called The Smart Girl's Guide to Growing Up. Yes. That was where all my education came from. I got the book. a book and I had to read it with my mum when I was like 12 years old. That Oh, that book was horrendous. That was, I remember yeah. it was like my mum would come in at nine o'clock and she'd be like, right, time to read the book. And I'd be like, I don't want to read the book. Wasn't even, it was kind of mine. I, got, I remember I got given, it was like a gift basket. It was like, I got some deodorant. I got the smart girl's guide to grey. <laughs> um, it was like a little gift. It was like a little um, sex ed gift basket. Wow. And I got I got given that I got given that and then we didn't really talk about it yeah we didn't really talk about it it was like right you've got this book read it um if you you have any questions I guess ask me them which I didn't but yeah it was like it was like a um sex ed gift basket oh wow (laughs) that's quite That's that's quite sweet though that's oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it makes you feel a bit less awkward about um about the yeah about that whole kind of like it's it's okay you know it's okay to to grow up. Um, I think I think in my house it's fairly similar to all you guys in that like I wasn't incredibly comfortable um when I was younger about talking about it with my mum and dad. Now that you know my siblings are a lot older um and now I'm older I kind of you know it's a part of life and you know when I started. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I started, you know, having sex and things in long term relationships, like it, it's been something that I can talk to them about. Um, I mean, even even going to to get contraception and things like that, it, it's it's always been something I've been open with. I've never, you know, gone behind anyone's back because um, I know some people can find it really hard to, you know, to talk to their parents about because uh, it, it's awkward. It is an awkward thing. Um, it is. It's you know. It's, <laughs> It's it's weird, but like yeah, I think I think I had a book as well, but I don't think I read much of it because I kind of I knew quite a lot um, already by the time I was given this book. Um, but I think yeah, I think that was I think we were all I think a lot of girls were given books. I think some guys yeah. as well. Some I know a couple of guys that got books to read. I, I think it's, I think it's good. <laughs> I think it's a good good method of you know learning. But at the same time, it's like you know I think you, I think you kind of learn as you go along, really. A lot yeah. of things like that. I actually have a point about kind of the social media side of like sex education now because I, I read something in the news. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but um, everyone will have heard of Zoella and she kind of got bashed yeah. recently. Oh, I, she, you, you know the I was yes. going to say, yeah, I know. Yeah. She did an I know. article. I don't even know how I know sex that. Toys. <laughs> Well, I came. I was watching a YouTube video about it, um, and it came up, and it was like she was discussing women's sex toys, and everyone said that was really inappropriate because her audience was sixteen-year-old girls. And first of all, that's not even her audience. But besides the point, sixteen-year-old girls can learn about that kind of thing, and it just yeah. made me think yeah. that I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I I didn't know at sixteen that there was women's sex toys. Yeah, I had same. no idea. No, I had no idea. So. I, I was thinking that's really interesting that social media has moved so far that people are comfortable enough to discuss that online with millions of people. I think that's probably what's pushed it forward instead of the schools itself. Because the fact that we are a few years different in age and there doesn't seem to be any difference in the way the schools have done it. Yeah, we all yeah, seem well, to be relatively close. Her, her audience has sort of grown up with her. Yeah. Mm. So they'll have all... Look, 
I know I read she was on the um, A-level media course and they yeah. dropped her because yeah. of this. Really? Which then that's Yeah, which then that's like, okay, so the schools obviously don't want to <laughs> don't want to kind of... They don't want to encourage... Yeah, they, don't want the, they don't want the bad rep. Yeah. But then it's A-level, so it's not even like secondary... Yeah, yes. Her brother's still yes. on it. <laughs> they don't want to encourage girls that are of age to learn about things that they can use. That that confuses me, and it does make me yeah. think. You know, it it are the schools still in the mindset of we we're teaching it because we have to. We're not teaching it because we want to, and we're teaching the bare minimum of it, and we're teaching the scientific side of it, and that's it. Mm. Yeah, I think schools try to stick to education, nothing personal, really. They do their job and get out. Yeah. Yeah, they do their job, but a lot of it is hush hush, and a lot of it is still, I think a lot of it's still looked down upon, and it's not as, you know, exploring your sexuality is quite, a, a, well, I'm going to sound probably cheesy saying this, but it's quite a beautiful thing, really. Um, because as you get older, you learn more about yourself and who you are as a person and you might you know you might you might end up coming out you might be gay you might be bi and it's it can be a really special it is a special thing do you know what i mean it's it, mm. it's so individual um and everyone is different um in that respect and i i just think i just think that's that's basically um what we're we're all trying to pick at is the fact that sex is you know sex is still looked down upon in schools and it's not as openly talked about as it should be it's just covered it's covered in one day or one lesson when actually it should be a thing that's constantly sort of evolving and changing and should be taught more about in schools more than it already is um and yeah. more openly as well what do you think about the education of sexuality because i know for certain i i did nothing about it i've only no, seen about it we didn't. Like good morning britain Oh, we didn't know. No, we we weren't taught about different sex sexes um, at all. If anything, we were taught boy no, we girl. Went, that's we were it. Taught male, Do you think female. you should be? Yeah, I think we should be definitely. I think I definitely I think, think we should be. They say, oh, it's the 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 school's argument right now will be it's the minority, and it's like okay, it is the minority, but but they still need to be taught. Exactly. Like, if you're saying, okay, all children need sex education, but you're only going to teach the straight children, then you're not giving all children sex education. Yeah, I think their argument also is that um, they don't want to force sexuality onto anyone. But I think there's a certain way you can teach it without even doing that. And I think just make them aware to the fact that it's there. Don't say, oh, you are, whatever, whatever the sexuality is. You say... That's there. If you are, you are. It's mm. natural. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, okay, so, you know, if you're lesbian, you can learn this part. And if you're gay, you learn this part. Trans, you learn this part. It's no, everyone learns all of it. Because at the age that mm-hmm. you're taught it, you're probably not going to fully know where you fit in. And that's completely mm. fine. But if you know everything, yeah. at least you've got that knowledge. And, then mm. also, and even it, the people that it doesn't apply to. They're, yeah. they're still gaining that knowledge of people around them and the society that they live in and the community that they're in. Yeah, and it it, call, it closes that gap because if everyone's aware of everything in that sense, then if you've got friends that are, that are bi, that are trans, non-binary, whatever, and you're talking to them about that, they're not going to feel excluded from the conversation because you will have learned the same thing that they'll have learned and it applies to them differently to you, but you're both aware of each other. Yeah, that's why I think this yeah. generation where people are more accepting of each other, we know pretty much everything about, well, we don't know everything, but we know a lot about different ways of living that we're more accepting. And I think that's why people find it much easier in the future just to be themselves. Yeah. yeah. But there's also that element of there's still people that judge people for everything. So there's still horrible yeah. people. Yeah. And I think the whole yeah. being comfortable in your own skin and being comfortable with talking about it is something that, I mean, for me, definitely, it comes with age. I think as you get older, you care a lot less about what other people think and you're more, yeah. okay, well, this is how I feel and it's valid to feel how I feel, so I'm going to continue to feel this mm-hmm. way. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Good talking to all of you. I know it's not a topic that... um 
people would particularly choose to discuss if they had the choice. But it's definitely something that I think we need to discuss more. I think we've kind of covered that schools should do more and definitely different ages. I think that's another yeah. really, really key point. Everyone needs to be taken into the equation with sex education, not just straight males and straight females. They need to cover LGBTQ+, plus everyone else. They need to cover a broader range of topics and they need to stop putting a stigma on it because I think that creates fear in some people's minds and um, almost a rebellion in other people's minds. And I think giving an objective view on it is definitely better and just trying to make sure everyone feels included and everyone feels comfortable so that there isn't this stigma and there isn't going to be this massive issue if something happens that, I guess, in quotes, isn't supposed to. Cool. But if you have any further points on this, then you can DM us on at GYB Hull and we'd love to hear from you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>